हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर अमोल राहने वेलकम्स यू टू द कोर्स फिजिक्स प्रिंसिपल्स एंड एप्लीकेशंस फॉर एफ वाई सेमिस्टर वन फिजिक्स पेपर टू सो वी आर स्टडिंग द फोर्थ चैप्टर सोर्सेस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी हैव स्टडीड द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम इन डिटेल we have also studied the different types of electromagnetic radiation we have also studied the radio waves micro waves and their sources we have also studied the infrared radiation uv radiation and visible light and their sources in the today's lecture we are going to study the x rays and gamma rays and their sources before that let us study the what are electromagnetic waves so we know that the electromagnetic waves or em waves are waves that are created as a result of vibrations between an electric field and a magnetic field in other words electromagnetic waves are composed of oscillating magnetic and electric fields so this is the electromagnetic spectrum and we have already studied the uh, radio waves micro waves infrared radiation uh, visible radiation and ultraviolet radiation in the today's lecture we are going to study the x rays and gamma rays so we know the different types of electromagnetic waves that means gamma rays x rays ultraviolet radiation visible radiation infrared radiation microwave radiation and radio waves so we know that the gamma radiation has the uh, <coughs> smallest wavelength radiation but their frequency is the highest and they are having highest energy radiation among the electromagnetic spectrum radio waves having the smallest frequency and hence smallest energy radiation whereas their wavelength is the longest one among all the electromagnetic waves so uh, we know the ranges of wavelengths and frequencies in electromagnetic spectrum so we are concerned with x rays and gamma rays in today's lecture so gamma rays whose wavelength Uh, falls in the range of 0.01 nanometer to 10 nanometer and frequency is of the order of 30 feta hertz to 30 eta hertz and gamma rays their wavelength is less than 0.01 nanometer and frequency is greater than 30 eta hertz so 1 feta hertz is approximately 10 raised to 15 hertz and 1 eta hertz is approximately 10 raised to 18 hertz so let us now study the x rays or x radiation in detail x rays are electromagnetic waves with wavelengths in the range of 0.01 to 10 nanometers corresponding to frequencies in the range of 30 feta hertz to 30 hexa hertz and energies in the range of 300 electron volt to 100 kilo electron volt and energies in the range of 100 electron volt to 100 kilo electron volt they are shorter in wavelength than uv rays and longer than the gamma rays x radiation is also called as rontgen radiation after william rontgen who is usually credited as its discoverer and who has named it x radiation to signify an unknown type of radiation he received the nobel prize in physics in 1901 for their discovery after uv uh, come x rays which uh, like the upper ranges of uv are also ionizing 
However, due to their higher energies, X-rays can also interact with matter by means of the Compton effect. Hard X-rays have shorter wavelengths than soft X-rays and as they can pass through many substances with little absorption, they can be used to see through objects with thicknesses less than that equivalent to a few meters of water. One notable use is diagnostics X-ray imaging in medicine, a process known as X-ray radiography. So X-rays are useful as probes in high energy physics also. So let us study the various sources of X-rays. In astronomical objects such as the accretion disk around neutron stars and black holes emit X-rays, enabling studies of this phenomenon. X-rays are also emitted by the coronas of stars and are strongly emitted by some types of nebulae. X-ray excitation and ejection of core atomic electrons, quantum scattering for low atomic numbers that all the properties they are given by the X-rays, right? So ex excitation and ejection of core atomic electrons and quantum, quantum scattering are the effects when X-rays are incident on the metals. X-rays are produced in laboratory in an apparatus called as Coolidge tube. So Coolidge tube is an apparatus where the X-rays can be produced. The Coolidge tube consists of a glass tube having high vacuum, a filament which acts as a cathode and an anode which emit the X-rays. As the cathode filament is heated, it emits electrons. The hotter the filament gets, the greater the emission of electrons. These electrons are accelerated towards the positively charged anode and when the electrons strike the anode, they change direction and emit brimstone hung or breaking radiation that is X-rays with a continuous range of energies. The maximum energy of X-rays is the same as the kinetic energy of the electrons striking the anode. So this is the typical um, diagram of the Coolidge X-ray tube. So this tube consists of two arms, one is anode arm where the anode is placed and another one is the cathode arm where the cathode terminal is placed. Right. So the glass tube having high vacuum, so inside this glass tube is high vacuum is there, a filament which acts as a cathode, so this is the filament which acts as a cathode and anode which emits X-rays. As the cathode filament is heated, so it, this cathode filament is, is heated, heated uh, it emits electrons. The hotter the filament gets, the greater the emission of electrons and these electrons they will fall on the anode, right? So these electrons they will strike on the anode because anode is at the positive potential as compared to the cathode and these electrons they are negatively charged, they will be attracted, they will be attracted towards the positively charged anode and the, when the electrons strike on the anode, this anode emit the uh, radiation, right? So this radiation, when the electron strikes on the anode, they change direction and emit breaking radiation. So the brim strahlung or breaking radiation is called as X-rays are emitted with a continuous range of energies. So these X-rays will be emitted with continuous range of energies and the maximum energy of X-rays is the same as the kinetic energy of the electron striking the anode. So this is the this is the working of Coolidge tube. After the X-rays, there comes the gamma rays. After X-rays comes gamma rays, which were discovered by Paul Ulrich Villard in 1900. 
these are the most energetic photons having no definite no defined lower limit to their wavelength gamma rays typically have frequencies about 10 exahertz or 10 raised to greater than 10 raised to 19 hertz and therefore have energies above 100 kilo electron volt and wavelengths less than 10 picometers that means less than the diameter of an atom in astronomy they are valuable for studying high energy objects or regions however as with x-rays this can only be done with telescope outside the earth's atmosphere that means only using the telescopes that are placed outside the earth atmosphere they can detect the uh, gamma rays and x-rays uh, they are coming from celestial bodies gamma rays are used experimentally by physicists for their penetrating ability and are produced by a number of radio isotopes they are used for irradiation of flood they are used for irradiation of foods and seeds for sterilization and in medicine they are occasionally used in radiation cancer therapy more commonly gamma rays are used for diagnostic imaging in nuclear medicine an example being PET scans the wavelength of gamma rays can be measured with high accuracy through the effect of quantum scattering let us now study the sources of gamma rays so the natural sources of gamma rays on earth include the gamma decay from naturally occurring radioisotopes such as potassium 40 and also as a secondary radiation secondary radiation from various atmospheric interactions with cosmic ray particles so cosmic rays are the rays that are coming from the celestial bodies some ray some rare terrestrial natural sources that produce gamma rays that are not of a nuclear origin are lightning strikes and terrestrial gamma ray flashes which produce high energy emissions from natural high energy voltages gamma rays are produced by a number of astronomical processes in which very high energy electrons are produced such electrons produce secondary gamma rays by the mechanism of inverse quantum scattering celestial bodies like pulsars quasars are sources of gamma rays notable artificial sources of gamma rays include fission such as occurs in nuclear reactors and high energy physics experiments such as neutral pion decay and nuclear fusion so fission and nu nuclear fusion are the two nuclear reactions that happen when two nuclei they will interact in the nuclear physics the fission term means the uh, <clears throat> breaking of a larger nuclei into two smaller nuclei in this process some part of the radiation in the form of alpha beta or gamma rays will be emitted whereas the fusion reaction means the uh, fusing that means the joining of two smaller nuclei to form a larger nuclei in both the reactions the large amount of energy will be emitted and the uh, gamma rays beta rays or alpha particles will be emitted gamma rays are produced by energetic ejection of core electrons in heavy elements quantum scattering for all atomic numbers excitation of atomic nuclei including dissociation of nuclei right so there are also other sources of uh, the gamma rays such as energetic ejection of core electrons in heavy elements quantum scattering is one of the example excitation of atomic nuclei including dissociation of nuclei 
so in the today's lecture we have studied the, the electromagnetic spectrum we have also studied the different types of electromagnetic waves we have also studied the x rays and their sources and gamma rays and their various sources in the next lecture we are going to study the uh, some applications of electromagnetic waves thank you